Hey folks, Michael McGee here. Right here, what you see behind me is some boys working. If you've been watching this channel long, that's not a shock to you at all. What we're doing is we're picking the corn that we left standing. This was all corn over here. All this was corn over here. We, we chopped it for silage. What we did, we left three rows standing. So what we're gonna do is go back through what the squirrels and deer haven't ate, we're gonna pick, and we're gonna have our seed for next year and our corn for our bread corn. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Watch and enjoy. As you remember, we planted Bersim clover on this side. Here in the middle where I've got some bare spots, I planted red clover. And then down on the end, well, I've got a wonderful stand of crimson clover. So my Bersim clover's doing good. My crimson clover's doing good. My red clover's doing mediocre. But as you can see right here, I've got bare spots, pretty bad bare spots. I'm gonna go over that today and reseed that with red clover because I want that to be thick. We want this experiment to go off as it should. We got them three rows picked. Now we've got corn over here. Now that corn that they just picked was the cross-pollinated, trucker's favorite, the yellow Guatemalan. Now they're going to pick the straight up yellow Guatemalan. If you watch this channel religiously, you'll know that right there is where Caleb was sitting when he got his first deer ever this year. I'm six foot tall, maybe a little better. I want you to look at this stock. 12 foot plus. We had some in this field that was 15 foot, three inches. Unbelievable. All right, we got that little patch picked. Now we're gonna come over here and pick this patch. It's just a, a narrow strip we left. It don't take a whole lot to make your bread corn and your seed corn. The thing that goes through this faster than anything is pigs. There's a reason why they say eating like a hog. Oh yeah, yeah. So anyway, we're gonna get that picked. As you see, we've got some clover out here. It was planted a little later than that over on the other field. And so it came up a little more sporadic, but it's still up. It's gonna do good, all we need is some rain. Got a super patch of greens right there. I'm gonna go take a look, see if there's any turnips in there. Wow, this patch is absolutely rank with them. I can smell the turnips, it's so rank with them. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah, look here, Caleb. I mean, we're talking about just a month and a half, something like that. That is absolutely gorgeous. Think, you think we ought to pick mom some of these? Yeah. She would love them. Just uh, let's get her about a dozen of them. The deer really won't eat these greens until it comes from really hard freezes and they'll eat them. And if you have a really hard winter, they'll eat the bulb out of the ground frozen. They'll just chew it out of the ground frozen. Hey, that's a nice one, old pal. Old buddy, old pal, what a globe. We got the seeds for these at a place called Livingston Garden Center. And I'm telling you, oh, Livingston Garden Center will lay it on you, buddy. I guarantee you, they have got what you need. I get a lot of my hog feed there. I get dairy feed there, but I get seeds there. That right there is a monster. And at this, stage of the game they're fresh they're not pithy in the middle they're going to be really good i like to eat them raw i like to eat them mashed in potatoes about half and half with the potatoes that is good now you want to talk about something that didn't have a crop failure 
the turnips didn't have a crop failure this year. Oh man, at least in this field. And I mean, it was dry as powder when I planted this, but they come up anyway, goes to show, plant your seed. Don't worry about whether it's rained or not, plant your seed and let nature take its course. I think that's enough, pal. I know it's only five. <laughs> Get one more, we'll do half a dozen. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. When they're this big, they add up fast. I don't want to pick more than the girls can use. But something like this is basically food storage. It's in the ground, it's not going nowhere. Come middle of the winter, if you don't have no food to eat, it'll be there. That's the way farmers survived during the Great Depression, the Civil War, different times when food was scarce. The farmers knew how to do it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Come over here. Oh, that's a big one. This right here is the guy that killed the five-point buck in the video that you watched recently. It was his first deer. He shot it just right behind you back about uh, 40 yards over there. And what happened when you pulled the trigger? Down. Down. Hit the ground immediately. No tracking. Give me five, that was awesome. You're still excited about that, ain't you? Yeah. So anyway, let's get over there and get some more corn picked. that are deer hunters may be thinking to yourself, why in the world would they go in there and pick this corn during deer season? There won't be no deer show up. Well, maybe they won't, but we have to get this corn because if we let the squirrels and the coons get it all, we ain't got no seed for next year. We're sunk on that end of it. So it wouldn't be worth a deer. Number two, last year, after we picked this corn, David killed an eight point just about three feet behind where you are at right now in the camera and the week before that matt had killed a seven pointer just over about 20 yards from that so doesn't seem like it really hurt that much that don't mean it ain't gonna spook them tonight there may never be another deer in here i don't know but odds are the deer will be back because we come in here and work all through the year so they're used to us they ain't really used to that lead poisoning, but they're used to us being here. I think that's an earlier, I mean, not too old. That's thick, man, is that ever it. thick. That's thicker than your arm, son. Yeah. <laughs> That'll make some good seed. Yep, sure will. This in here is probably the longest. Yeah. Woo. David picked that one. And yours was the thickest, so. That's our two prime examples right there. It's not the straightest deer in the world, but long, a lot of corn on it. And that, you get big and fat like that, you got a lot of corn there. Yeah, that's a nice one. We've got to the end of the field. We're just pretty much ready to wrap this up. I think that we're gonna call it a day, get on out of here. We'll probably do some deer hunting tonight. Who knows? The corn, picked for the year we've got our seed that's pretty important around here for us and to have our bread corn we like corn bread i don't know about you there it is beautiful 55 gallon does this go in um seed i guess it's pretty thick yeah. pretty nice i didn't know what to expect i thought we might need Whoa. another barrel we'll Whoa. put this old scrunny uh scrappy corn in that barrel and that'll just be pig feed. Oh, okay. Yep, can you shuck it down and show me what's in it? They sell a lotion called horn, corn, corn, corn huskers lotion because when you shuck corn, these shucks literally dry your hands out. But just doing it for a while like we have doesn't do it that bad. But if you did it all day for a week, 
your hands would be in desperation. I've done it for a week and it's it's no fun. Your hands become drier than cracker juice. You got it there, buddy. Especially don't do what Joel did. What'd he do? Dishes, do oh it. yeah, you don't want to wash dishes for sure. Show me that ear, yeah. Beautiful. A little bit small for seed, just give that to the pigs. What we like doing is getting the cob from back this side to make sure it has a thing on it. Uh, all right let's get out of here we're done we're gonna get on out of here we hope you have a great day we'll see you on the next video